The following program contains mature content matter. Listener discretion is advised. Since the dawn of time, the world has been plagued by demons and monsters, cloaked by the night and shadows. However, humanity found out about these creatures and sent out brave men and women to defend their homelands. These are the tales of the Monster Hunters. Our story begins as Alikan finds himself inside a small wooded area behind Anders Park surrounded by four figures, all of which are wearing red hooded robes. Please, you don't have to do this. You are Lycan, a monster. You should not exist or the rest of your kind. For this affront, you will cease to exist. The Lycan is suddenly grabbed by two of these red hooded figures. As the red hood who spoke to him steps forward, No, please, no! Brandishing a dagger with a blade cast from pure silver, and then quickly impales this into his heart. Meanwhile, across town, Bruno is being chased through a back alley, being chased by two mummy creatures known as the Seabuck. Reggie! Pat! Any time! Just up ahead, Reggie and Pat are standing on top of a garage roof, both holding the ends of a net. Pat and Reggie quickly walk towards the edge of the flat roof, net in hand. Watching as Bruno goes running by, followed by the shambling Sibak. They throw the net down, landing on top of them, and the Sibak suddenly stumbles forward and tries to get the net off of them. You ain't getting that net off of you. Bruno pulls out a lighter. Foolish mortal. Ordinary fire will not stop us. Yeah, yeah, I know. I need something much more effective, which is why I'm going to use these two beauties I happen to have with me. Bruno then reveals two one-gallon containers of drain cleaner. Fool, what do you think you are going to accomplish with that? This is drain cleaner, and one of the chemicals in it is sulfuric acid. When lit up, be more enough to barbecue your ass. Bruno opens the first container and begins to splash it towards the first sabacc. Once the contents have been emptied, Bruno proceeds to open the second container, and then splashes its contents towards the second one. Need a light? I don't, but the future Mr. and Miss Crispy do. Pat smiles, and then strikes a wooden match and throws it towards the Zabak closest, and it immediately goes up in flames. As the first Zabak begins to writhe back and forth, screaming in pain, Pat sets the second Zabak ablaze immediately begins to also writhe back and forth. This goes on for a few more minutes, until both of the Sibar are nothing but black ashes. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. The mummies are now burned to dust. Pat, help! Oh shit, Reggie! What's wrong with Reggie? Both run towards the garage and look to the side and see Reggie hanging off the side, gripping the edge of the roof. Reggie! What are you doing up there? The ladder fell apart just as I was about to climb down. The ladder fell apart? You know, the same damn ladder that's been held up together with duct tape and rope? The same ladder a certain someone was supposed to replace? The ladder was fine. If something happened to it, it was probably because you climbed down wrong. How does that even make sense? I climbed down wrong? You knew the ladder was structurally unsound. Yet yourself, and not to mention the extra weight you are carrying since you started going out with Brooke, I may add, must have climbed down on the wrong angle, putting more weight on the areas of the ladder that could no longer support said weight. And that caused the ladder to fall apart. Are you shearing yourself? Have you gone completely insane? That makes no sense at all! Makes perfect sense, Pat. You're just in denial is all. 
Guys, if you're done arguing, can you please help me down? I don't think I can hold on much longer. Settle down. Yelling at us is not going to help your situation. I got an idea. That is, we're going to push the dumpster under him. And he can fall down into, and all the trash bands will cushion his fall. Are you crazy? What? It's a good idea. A good idea? Do you have any latex gloves with you? No. Then how do you expect me to push that dumpster? Are you serious right now? It's a dumpster, Pat. Those things are filthy. I touch up my bare hands, and who knows what could happen. You would be saving your friend. It's what would be happening. I don't think it's that far of a drop. I think you'll be okay if he just tucks and rolls when he comes down and not lay on his feet. Oh. Okay, good. You're doing fine. Just come in straight and then turn it to the left and then forward until you're under Reggie. What's that smell? It's called garbage, stupid. You really think this is going to work? It should, but if it doesn't, blame Pat. It was his idea. Just like old Reggie. It'll be fine. Oh, I don't know, guys. <sighs> Reggie, it's getting late. I'm hungry and I'm horny. So either let go of the roof and fall down, or else I'm going to climb up there and push you down myself. How are you going to climb up there? With that ladder over by the garage I ran by. What? There's been a ladder there the whole time? And now you're just mentioning it? I didn't think it was necessary until Reggie pissed me off. <sighs> Can you at least go and get it? Pat, it's on its side next to the garage, which means it is on the ground. How can I pick that up without gloves? Where is he going? To get a ladder. What ladder? Weren't you listening to a word I said? No, no, don't help. I'll move the dumpster all by myself. Thanks, guys. I thought I was going to fall. Don't be silly, Reggie. Your well-being is important to us, right, Pat? Oh, yeah. More to others, apparently. Can we go home now? Sure. Call yourself a cab, and we'll see you tomorrow. What? Why does he have to call himself a cab? Pat, he climbed down the ladder. So? The ladder that was on the ground. The same ladder you touched with your dumpster hands. I can't have him coming in the Impala all contaminated. You can't be serious. After all this, you're gonna make him take a cab home all by himself? He won't be alone. You'll be with him. Why will I be with him? Oh, were you not listening to what I just said? All I heard was the rambling of a madman. A madman of valid reasons. Now, make sure you don't call Naveen because if you do that, you will contaminate this cab, and then I'll never be able to ride in it ever again. Where are you going? That's a stupid question. I'm going home. See you there. Unbelievable. Uh, Pat? Yes? Do you have any money on you for the cab? Once Bruno reaches the end of the alley, he crosses the street and walks toward the empty lot where the car is parked. As he reaches the car, he hears the cries of a woman. Please, help me! He turns quickly and is surprised to see a naked woman running toward him. As the woman reaches him, Bruno sees a black minivan approaching and then stops. Four red hoods get out and begin to walk towards Bruno and the now terrified woman. Stop right there. I'm not going to let you use this woman as a party favor. Step away from the woman. Our business is not with you. You know, if you want me to take you seriously, why don't you all drop your hoods down and then speak to me? Three out of four of these figures drop their hoods and immediately draw silver daggers. We will overlook your ignorance. As long as you get in your car and drive away right now. If not... You will suffer the same as the lichen. You're a lichen? She's a lichen? What would you know about lichens? I know enough. I'm a damn hunter. You are a hunter? Correct, your highness. And I know you have no reason to hurt her. Noble, but pointless. 
This lichen will die tonight. Oh yeah? How are you going to do that when this lichen changes and rips your tits off? We don't have to worry about that. We already hit her with a toxin that prevents her from changing for our safety. Oh, <sighs> well, that would have been good to know 30 seconds ago. How long does this toxin last for? Long enough for them to kill me. Looks like you're going to have company in the afterlife. You can still walk away. I can't. I should, but I can't. Why? My grandfather would kill me. I'm sorry. Two words I thought a naked woman would never say to me. Last chance to walk away, Hunter. Are you kidding? I got you all just where I want you. So be it. You will not be the first or the last hunter we kill. The Red Hoods look behind them to see Reggie and Pat standing there armed. You really think you could take us all out before we rushed you? Only one way to find out. So if you and the rest of your band need to know, then go for it. But I warn you, my friend and myself are pretty good shots. Yeah, right. Enjoy your stay of execution, Lycan. Because brief it will be. Not as long as we're around. But then enjoy what little time you have as well, Hunter. The Red Hoods turn away and begin to walk towards their minivan, while Reggie and Pat walk past them. Bruno has removed his shirt and given it to the girl to wear. Only my brother would be in a Mexican standoff with a naked woman. This woman is a lichen genius. She's a lichen? You saved my life. The woman begins to put her arms around Bruno, who manages to wiggle out of them. I don't mean to interrupt this hallmark moment, but who were those miserable assholes? They are known as the Red Hoods. Red Hoods? Red Hoods are a fraternity of hunters dedicated to hunting lichens and feral werewolves alike without provocation. So all they want to do is wipe you out? Yes. Red Hoods are ruthless. They show no mercy and kill all men, women, and children that they find. They sound lovely. How'd you come across them? I was out running as I always do because it helps clear my mind. When I came across them along the path I was running on, they immediately came after me, hit me with that foul toxin. I ran and ran until I was fortunate enough to come upon this beautiful man who saved me. Did beautiful man by chance get your name or give you his name? Things are so crazy it slipped my mind. Well then? Well, then what? Seriously? I'm sorry, I'm Bruno. This cranky ass my brother Pat and that's Reggie. I'm Stacy. Stacy, you need to get back to where you came from while the Red Hoods are gone. Are you insane? She isn't going out there on her own. It's too dangerous. I'll drive her home. If you wouldn't let me finish, I was going to say that. What are you doing? I'm going to get into the car. I don't think so. Remember, you're contaminated. Seriously? After I just saved you? Yes, you did. Thank you. But if you get into that car, you'll put us both at greater risk than when the Red Hoods were here. What about her? What about her? Did you not hear her? She was out running, dummy, on all fours. Which means her hands were touching the ground. Wouldn't that mean that they're contaminated as well? Of course not. When she is in lichen form, it is her lichen hands touching the ground, not her human hands. So you see, her human hands are fine because they are not touched the ground at all. I'm scared, Bruno. I don't want to get contaminated. Don't worry, Stacy. None of us is getting contaminated. Well, unless your dumb ass has 20 bucks, Reggie and me are getting into that car. You got $20 on you by chance? Where would she keep it, idiot? Have you ever heard of keystering? Keystering? Yes. You know, it is when you relax your... Yes, I know what keystering is. Then why did you ask? <sighs> you got 20 or not? I do not. But I have two bus tokens you and Reggie can use. Bus tokens? Really? Yeah. If you hurry, the next bus will be here soon. How would you even know that? A while back, I dated a chick who drove a bus along this very route. How do you think you know what this empty lot? It's where she parked the bus one night while we got it on. <sighs> so we may or not be picked up on the same bus you desecrated? You never know. Let's go, Pat. If I'm not home soon, Mom's going to have the police looking for me. If you don't relax, I'll give the cops a reason to be looking for you. I'm cold. Can we go? Sure thing, Wolfie. Just wait in the car, would you? You know... This isn't fair that I have to take the bus when I have as much right to get in the car as you do. Oh, you want to speak about unfair? You know how unfair is it for me? How is this unfair for you? Because 
I can't go to sleep until you get home because it will be me, not you, who have to go behind you and use the wipes to clean the door handle on the outside and the inside of the door, then have to wipe down the handrail going down the stairs, and then have to go into the washroom and wipe down the door handle, the washroom light switches, and the sink handles just to make sure there's no contamination. So please tell me again how this is not unfair to me. Ugh. Let's go catch the bus, Reggie, because in a minute my head's going to explode for listening to my insane brother. Oh, and Pat. What is it? If the driver's name is Natalie, tell her my brother. She might let you ride for free. Warm yet? I am now. What is it? If it is Natalie, Make sure, before you give me my bus tokens back, that you wipe them down. Why is it? Why did you stop walking for him? We just missed our bus. Of course we did. Detective, I need your help. Your husband is missing. You're remarkably well informed. In 1937, a titan of industry disappeared. You must understand, this changes everything. Everything? Now, his grieving wife. Every day is a cruel joke. Because every night, you dream of her. A mysterious detective. Here we are. Hexagram 36. And a cop with something to prove. There's a reason I got into this line of work, and it isn't to cast women in need out into the cold. Must confront dark secrets. And you're sure he said Aurora? Detective, my husband is an engineer, not an occultist. And terrifying cosmic forces. Death marks people, changes them. You can see it in their eyes. Then do you believe in all this nonsense? This isn't something you can outrun. Did you bring a woman here? She went up toward the lighthouse. God knows why. From Wrong Dimension Productions. What your husband and his friends attempted here has left a shadow in its wake. With Sally Walker Taylor. I just want to find my husband. Griffin Puatu. Beat it. You were never here, understand me? And Peter Burkrot. I told you there was nothing I could do for you. Rebecca, please. Let go! Twilight Meridian. After one too many bus transfers, Pat creeps through the living room, as to not wake Bautista. He steps into his room and immediately begins to strip down to his boxes. He climbs into bed, and he lays there a moment staring up at the ceiling, and then closes his eyes. He then turns to his side, flopping his right arm over, and is startled to realize that there is someone in bed with him. Pat opens his eyes and sees Stacy laying next to him. Pat stands up just as Batista comes running into his room. Primo, why is she screaming? B because she's psychotic! What did you do, Pat? What did I do? Why she's in my bed? Well, she couldn't sleep on a couch with Batista now, could she? Why is she here? You were supposed to take her home. Oh my god, excuse me? Who is the naked girl in Pat's bed? And why didn't you tell me about her, Bruno? It slipped my mind once you woke up and let me have my way with you. Bruno, who is that annoying woman? Oh, shut up. Bruno, you didn't tell her that you had a girlfriend? <laughs> of course I did. What the traumatic night she has had, she must have forgotten. Well, she's not the only one whose night is going to be traumatic. Is one of you going to bring us up to speed as to why this woman is here? Go ahead, Bruno. Please explain, and also explain why you didn't take her home. I can't explain that. Oh yeah? Then explain. And that is? She didn't want to go home. Ho ho ho! Well that explains it! Mystery solved! Oh really? That's why, huh? Well why did you have to bring her here? Why not elsewhere? Where else was he going to take me, genius? Oh really? Oh, Do you want to know where I'm about to take you, bitch? Alright. Let's see if the rest of the explain until we've all had a good night's sleep. Pat is right. 
A few hours more won't hurt. Good night, everyone. Pat is right for once. Let's sleep on it and finish this discussion in the morning. And just where do you think you're going? To bed? Not with me or not. Then where am I going to sleep? You can sleep with me. All right, but stay on your side of the bed and don't hog the covers. You step one singular foot in that bed, and I will twist something you love into the shape of a pretzel. Is that clear? If you lay a finger on him, you will learn why I am the most feared lichen in my pack. What? She's a lichen? You brought a lichen home? In my defense, I've always wanted a dog, right, Pat? <laughs> Don't drag me into your shit show. Just come and lay with me, Bruno. That way you will see what it feels like to be with a real woman. Oh, hell no. If anyone's going to show him what a real woman feels like, it's going to be me. Christy grabs Bruno's hand and begins to drag him away with her. Pat! Oh yeah? Like you're going to get any sympathy from me because you have two women fighting over you? Batista! No hablo inglés. Pat! Batista! Pat! Batista! Pat! Isn't this strange that I'm getting kicked out of my bed and my room? Get out! Is that all you can say? I can scream again. Scream all you want, but you're washing all those sheets before you leave. Get out! And we're back to that. You look terrible. What happened to you? Oh, Christy made it perfectly and painfully clear over and over what a real woman feels like. Are you going to be okay? Drink some water. You look pale. Water's going to help me with what is wrong with me. Christy walks to the kitchen and then smiles at Pat before she walks up behind where Bruno is sitting and puts her hands on top of his shoulders. <gasps> Good morning, my Big, strong, sexy man. You were so fantastic. Uh, th thanks. Wait until you see what I have in store for you later. Okay, okay. I was wrong, Christy. I should never have brought that liking home. Okay? Happy now? That's sweet of you to admit, Bruno. Thank you. <sighs> Thank goodness. But it doesn't change what I just mentioned to you. Primo, that girl is a lichen? Yes. Why, Batista? Bruno saved her from the Red Hoods. Because of that, she, a female lichen, becomes infatuated with any man or woman who has saved their life. How long does infatuation last for? Until the female is able to show her gratitude. And that is by sleeping with her savior. Correct, Primo. Is there no other way out of this? I cannot answer that because I do not know, Primo. Are you all talking about me? Because my ears were burning. Are you sure that wasn't another part of your body that was burning? Because if it was, that's because you have an STD, not because people were talking about you. It's so sad how the less pretty ones are always so threatened by me. Alright, little vixen. If you want to solve Pat, you go right ahead. I did my good deed and I saved you from those damn red hoods. But if you think I'm going to stand here and let you insult this she-devil, you are sadly mistaken. So take yourself back into Pat's room and get yourself home. Fine. I don't know what I ever saw in you anyways. Don't get all high and mighty. We both know what the things are that you like about me. Christy suddenly pinches Bruno. But they will remain unsaid? Aw, oh, Bruno. That was so sweet and sexy how you stood up for me. It was nothing, babe. There is no way I was going to let Woofy keep bad-mouthing you. Christy grabs Bruno's hand. W what are you doing? I'm taking you to the bedroom. Isn't that what you want, big man? Hey, those are my clothes. Well, I'm sorry, but what did you think I was going to do? Walk home naked? Are you wearing my underwear under those track pants? No. <laughs> then you can keep them. Whatever. Primo? Yeah? I appreciate you guys letting me stay here, but I have to ask. Is it always going to be like this? No! Christy, please! I don't think he's supposed to bend that way. <sighs> as long as Bruno's still living here, it will be. Tales of the Monster Hunters The Red Hoods was voiced by Antonio Ferrara as Bruno. Enzo Ferrara as Pat. Paul Cairns as Reggie. Pablo Lopez as Bautista. Raven Batonio as Christy. Mystic Waters as Stacy. Hottie Mocklab as the Sabox. John Kennard as the Lycan. The voices of the Red Hoods were performed by Marie Grace. Stephen Newhand. Mads Franklin. And Sean Acevedo Lopez. Narrated by Sage Crossley. 
royalty-free music sourced from Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com and Pixabay. End credits music by Alexander Ferrara. Audio engineering by Alexander Ferrara. Created by Antonio and Enzo Ferrara. Directed and produced by Antonio and Enzo Ferrara. Cover art by Enzo Ferrara. Edited and written by Antonio Ferrara. Creative consultant Paul Cairns. Coming soon. Tales of the Monster Hunter Serial Box Issue 5.1 on Friday, November 10, 2023. And then on Monday, November 20, 2023. Tales of the Monster Hunters Volume 2 Issue 6, Hunters for Hire. This presentation of Tales of the Monster Hunters podcast has been brought to you by Giant Monster Productions. Copyright 2023. To contact Giant Monster Productions, email them at giantmonsterprod at hotmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Giant Monster Pro. Instagram at Tales of the Monster Hunters, and on Facebook and YouTube. If you have enjoyed this podcast and want to hear more, please subscribe, like, and favorite so you never miss an episode. Thank you for listening.